Kirtan at the house of John Kasi. Omagyan Timirandasya Genadjana Savakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasma Sri Gurvena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasdaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Govardhani Pachari Ne Nirvishni Sasunya Vahari Asyatya De Sitari Ne Pancha Kalpa Turu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Deva Ja Paditanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnave Gyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakti Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, uh, we'll start off with the Hari Lila, and uh, you can put the verse up on the board. This is let's see. Um, this is from Adi Lila, Chapter Seventeen. Uh, which verse, Maharaj? Yeah, yeah verse okay. number 140, 140, 140, 140, 140, 140, We'll start with 139. E Matta Kirtana Kari Nagaram Brahmila Brahmite Brahmite Sabde Karadwaja Gela. Performing Kirtan in this way, circulating through every nook and corner of the city. They finally reach the door of the Kazi. Next verse. Mm -hmm. Murmuring in anger and making a roaring sound, the people under the protection of Lord Chaitanya became mad through such indulgence. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's purport, the Kazi had issued an order not to perform kirtan, congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord. But when this was brought up to Lord Chaitanya, he ordered civil disobedience to the Kazi's orders. Lord Chaitanya and all his devotees, naturally enthusiastically, although agitated, must have made a great noise with their loud cries. 41. So we've been, uh, we've been narrating from the Chaitanya Bhagavat and within details of the Kirtan, that leads up to this section here. So this section now describes the Lord of the Road is arriving at the house of the Kirtana Dwanite Kaji Luka Lila Gare Tarjana Garja Suni Ahoy Bahire. The loud sound of the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra certainly made the Kazi very much afraid and he hid himself within his room. Hearing the people thus protesting, murmuring in great anger, that Kazi would not come out of his home. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. <clears throat> the Kazi's order not to perform sankirtan could not stand as long as there was no civil disobedience. Under the leadership of Supreme Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the chanters increased in number, disobeyed the orders of the Kazi. Thousands assembled together and formed parties chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and making a tumultuous sound of protest. 
Thus, the Kazi was very much afraid, as naturally one should be under such circumstances. In the present day, also, people all over the world may join together in the Hare Krishna movement and protest against the present degraded governments of the world's godless societies, which are based on all kinds of sinful activities. Srimad Bhagavatam states that in the age of Kali, thieves, rogues, and fourth class people who have neither education nor culture capture the seats of government to exploit the citizens. This is a symptom of Kali Yu that, that has already appeared. People cannot feel secure about their lives and property, yet the so called governments continue and government ministers get fat salaries although they are unable to do anything good for society. <clears throat> the only remedy for such condition is to enhance the Sankirtan movement under the banner of Krishna consciousness. Protest against the sinful activities of all fundamental religious movement. <clears throat> it is a movement for the reformation of all the anomalies of human society. The people take to it seriously, discharging this duty scientifically as ordered by Sri Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu. The world will see peace and prosperity instead of being confused and hopeless under useless governments. There are always rogues and thieves in human society, but as soon as a weak government is unable to execute its duties, these rogues and thieves come out to do their business. The entire society becomes a hell unfit for gentlemen to live in. There is an immediate need for good government, a government by the people with Krishna consciousness. Unless the masses of people become Krishna conscious, they cannot be good men. The Krishna conscious movement that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha, Maha Mantra still has its potency. Therefore, people should understand it seriously and scientifically and spread it all over the world. Is there more? I can't see the bottom. That's it. Okay, go up higher. The Sankirtan movement started by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is described in Chaitanya Bhagavat, Madhya Kanda, 23rd chapter, beginning with verse 241, which states, my dear Lord, let my mind be fixed at your lotus feet. Following Lord Chaitanya's chanting, all of the devotees re reproduced the same sound he chanted. In this way, the Lord proceeded, leading the entire party on the strand roads by the bank of the Ganga. When the Lord came to his own gut or bathing place, he danced more and more. He then proceeded to Madai's gut. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord, who was known as Vishwambar, danced all over the banks of the Ganga. Then he proceeded to Barakona Ghat and Nagariya Ghat and traveled through Ganga Nagara and reached Simulia, a quarter at, end, a quarter at one end of the town. All these places surround Mayapur. After reaching Simulia, Simulia, the Lord proceeded towards the Kazi's house, and in this way he reached the door of the Kazi. So you're seeing this is, if you go today, you can see all these places as they lead to the house of the Chan Kazi, which is still there. <clears throat> okay. And we're seeing, Srila Prabhupada is giving us the formula that the Sankirtan movement is the eternal movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in order to transform the world from sinful, degraded uh, population governed by persons who don't know how to lead governments or simply interested in personal aggrandizement and personal uh, gain. And therefore, the whole world is unhappy, even in this present day coronavirus situation. Such a little problem that came up, and they turned it into some big, major problem, all done by the 
the rascal governments who don't know, do not know how to manage anything. So this is where we're faced. So the people are victimized by these rascal governments. And we see here how Lord Chaitanya, when his movement was stopped, what did he do? He became like Rudra himself, organized the Sankirtan party, which brought in millions of people and chanted and danced all the way up to the house of Chan Kasi. Now Chan Kasi says here, it says that he became fearful when the devotees came and he would not come out of his house. Mm -hmm. So we'll read the next verse. Udata Kona Bhagya Kajira Gara Pushpavana Vistari Vanila Iha Dasa Vrindavana. Naturally, some of the people who were very much agitated began to retaliate by the Kazi's action by wrecking his house and flower garden. Flower garden. Srila Vrindavan Dasta Kaur has elaborately described this incident, and that's what we were reading yesterday. Okay, continue. Tava Mahaprabhutare Dwarite Vasila Bhavya Loka Pataya Kajire Bolaila. Thereafter, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reached that Kazi's house, he sat down by the doorway and sent some respectable persons to call for the Kazi. Dura haite oile kaje mata ko iaya kajire vasila prabhu samona kariya. When the kasi came, his head bowed down, the Lord gave him proper respect and the seat. Some of the men in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's civil disobedience movement were agitated because they could not control their minds. But the Lord was thoroughly peaceful, sober, and unagitated. Therefore, when the Kasi came down to see him, the Lord offered him proper respect and a seat because he was a respectable government officer. Thus, the Lord taught us by his personal behavior. In pushing on our Sankirtan movement of Krishna consciousness, we might have to face difficult days, but we should always follow in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and do the needful according to time and circumstances. Like yesterday, we went out on Sankirtan to do Harinam in the downtown, and they have restrictions imposed about gatherings and such displays. So we were out there, and we started at 11 o'clock, and by 12 o'clock, uh, my time, we I had departed to come to do the program. But just after I left, I had learned that some of the authorities came and told the devotees that um, with all respects and very polite and friendly, they said that there is a time for this gathering that you're having and the time ended, just ended now. So we have to ask you to stop. So the devotees stopped. So we didn't agitate the situation by keeping going because we know that by doing that, it would be useless. So we decided to stop and then of course use the opportunity next time to go out again and follow their instructions in terms of how to perform the Sankirtan. The fact that they're allowing us the Sankirtan without any resistance and then we want to keep that and then continue to push it more and more. <laughs> so as Prabhupada said, we, 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 we have to face difficult days, but we should always follow in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya and do the needful according to time and circumstances. 
Okay. Prabhu Balena Amutamara Alama Abhyagata Amideki Lukaila E Dharma Kemata. In a friendly way, the Lord said, Sir, I have come to your house as a guest, but upon seeing me, you hide yourself in your, in, in your room. What kind of etiquette is this? Kajika hetume aisa kruda haia toma santa karaite vahinu lukaya. Kazi replied, You have come to my house in a very angry mood. To pacify you, I did not come before you immediately, but kept myself hidden. Ebe tu me shanta hoile asami lilan bagya more tomahena atita atiti pailan. Now that you have become pacified, I have come to you. It is my good fortune to receive a guest like your honor. Now, the Kazi is very respectable to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gramya Sambane Chakravarti Hayamur Chacha Deha Samba Haite Hoya Grama Sambanda Sancha In our village relationship, Nilambara Chakravarti was my uncle. Such a relationship is stronger than a bodily relationship. Okay, so purport. In India, even in the interior villages, all the Hindus and Muslim communities used to live very peacefully by establishing a relationship between them. The young men called the elderly men of the village by the name of Chacha or Kaka, uncle, and the men of the same age called each other Dada, brother. The relationship was very friendly. There were even invitations from Muslim houses to Hindus' houses and from Hindu houses to Muslim houses. Both the Hindus and the Muslims accepted the invitations to go to another house to attend ceremonial functions. Even until 50 or 60 years ago, the relationship between Hindus and Muslims was very friendly. There were no disturbances. We do not find any Hindu-Muslim riots in the history of India even in, during the days of Muslim rule all over the country. Conflict between Hindus and Muslims was created by the polluted politicians, especially the British. And thus the situation gradually became so degraded that India was divided into Hindustan and Pakistan. Fortunately, the remedy to unite all, not only the Hindus and Muslims, but all communities of all the nations can be still implemented by the Hare Krishna movement on the strong basic platform of love of God. Hmm. So you can see the history. Now there is tension between the two communities and this was agitated by the British. The British did this. They purposely created enmity between these two groups in a very sinister and a very, what we say, uh, diplomatic way and they, that way they could, the idea is divide and conquer. So in order to rule India, they needed to break the different sects against each other and that way they can easily control this, the population. So you see how these governments, rather than working for the benefit of the people, create enmity and problems within the society. But Prabhupada goes on to say, of course, we know that this is the history of politics. Politics means that there is always conflict. And so the politicians are always trying to destroy their opposition or gain power by creating enmity between other groups. Mm -hmm. And so here Papa said, but the remedy is to unite all communities of the world 
by the strong movement of the chanting of the Hare Krishna because on that platform there is no disunity okay so next first Dilambara Chakravarti Hoya Toma Nana Say somebody, hoi to me, Amara, Bagina. Nilambara Chakravarti is your maternal grandfather. And by this relationship, you are thus my nephew. Kazi is speaking. Next. Baginara Kroda Mama Avasya Sahaya. Matulera Aparada, Bagina, Nalaha, Laya. When a nephew is very angry, his maternal uncle is tolerant. And when the maternal uncle commits an offense, the nephew does not take it very seriously. So the Kazi is showing, making, showing how, in a real sense of the world, that Lord Chaitanya and himself are actually related through Nil Nilambara Chakravarti Thakur because of the Nilambara Chakravarti Thakur was the, was the uh, father of uh, Sachi Mata and Nilambara Chakravarti Thakur and the Kasi were very close friends. So when friends become very close, they become, they act like family members in many sense. So here, so the Kazi is saying, well, you're like my nephew. And, you know, if I've done something wrong, uh, you know, you have to be tolerant. <laughs> Don't take it so seriously. Evata duhara kata hoyatara tore. Pitareda arta keha buji he napare buji te napare. In this way, the Kazi and the Lord talk with each other with various in indications, but no outsider could understand the inner meaning of their conversation. Prabhu keha prashna lagi alima tomar stane kaji keha. Ajakara, ye tomara mane. The Lord said, My dear uncle, I have come to your home just to ask you some questions. Yes, the Kazi replied, You are welcome. Just tell me what is in your mind. Prabhu keha go dugda koi gabi tomara mata risha ana upajaya tate tenho pita. The Lord said, you drink cow's milk, therefore the cow is your mother, and the bull produces grains for your maintenance, therefore he is your father. Pita mata mara koi evi kon dharma kon bali karatumi e mata vikrama. Since the bull and cow are your father and mother, how can you kill and eat them? What kind of religious principle is this? On what strength are you so daring that you commit such sinful activities? Mm -hmm. Purport. Everyone can understand that we drink the milk of cows and take the help of bulls in producing agricultural products. Therefore, since our real father gives us food grains and our mother gives us milk, which wish to live, the cow and bull are considered our mother and father. According to Vedic civilization, there are seven mothers of which the cow is one. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu challenged the Muslim colony, what kind of religious principle do you follow by killing your father and mother to eat them? In any civilized human society, no one would dare kill his father and mother for the purpose of eating them. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu challenged the system of Muslim religion as patricide and matricide. Ma patricide and matricide. In the Christian religion also, the principal commandment is thou shall not kill. 
Nevertheless, Christians violate this rule. They are very expert in killing and in opening up slaughterhouses. In our Krishna conscious movement, our first provision is that no one should be allowed to eat any kind of flesh. It does not matter whether it is cow's flesh or goat's flesh, but we especially stress the pro prohibition against cow's flesh because according to Shastra, the cow is our mother. Thus the Muslims cow killing was challenged by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there are many nice points in this verse and that real religion means to live according to the principle of nonviolence. And that nonviolence doesn't limit its definition to just humans. It means to show kindness, care and concern for all living entities. So no one, no living entity, even insects should not be unnecessarily killed. And especially killing for the sake of eating. When Krishna has provided so many nice grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, milk products, and various other roots uh, and berries that one can eat, which are fully nutritious. Actually, Srila Prabhupada mentions in one discussion that the staple is milk products and grains. If you have a regular diet of milk products and grains, then you will generally remain healthy. He said vegetables and fruits are extra, but they're also required. But therefore, if you have the bull to till the field, you can grow nice grains and vegetables also. And if you have a cow, you get all the nutrition milk products that you need to live happily and healthily and also take care of the cow. Taking care of the cow is taking care of Krishna's very dear living entity. So one who takes care of the cow very nicely receives the special blessings of Krishna directly. <laughs> but the cow from the uh, general point of view produces so many nice things that are necessary for health and happiness within the human society. So therefore Mahaprabhu didn't say anything about stopping the kirtan. He went right to another principle. He mentioned the unnecessary killing of cows. Okay. Kaje kahe toma yache veda purana tache ama shastra ketava korana. The Kazi replied, As you have your scripture called the Vedas and Puranas, we have our scripture known as the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. Purport. Chan Kazi agreed to talk with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the strength of scriptures. According to the Vedic scripture, if one can support his position by quoting from the Vedas, his argument is perfect. Similarly, when the Muslims support their positions with quotations from the Quran, their arguments are author, also authorized. When Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu raised the question of the Muslims cow killing and bull killing, Chan Kasi came to the standard of understanding from his scriptures. Okay, so again, if you have an argument and you want to present your argument, you have to substantiate the principles that you're arguing on by reference to the Vedas. Otherwise, you can anyone can say anything at any time, any place. And then, but an intelligent man will accept something that is authoritative and not somebody's opinion. <laughs> so, yeah. Kaji kaha tamara yache veda purana tache amara shastra ketava korana. The Kasi replied, as you, as you have your scriptures called the Vedas and the Puranas. Oh, okay, Maharaj, we, sorry, this is the same one, Maharaj. I yeah, next one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Say Shasha Kahe, Say Shasha Kahe, Pravitra Nirviti Marga Beda, Nirviti Marga Jiva Matra Vadera Nisadya. According to the Quran, there are two ways of advancement through increasing the propensity to enjoy and through decreasing the propensity enjoy, of enjoy. On the path of de a decreasing attachment, the Riti Marg, the killing of animals is prohibited. And he's making a point that there are, there are concessions in scriptures, but the actual principle of decreasing attachment, which is the principle of religion, to decrease one's material attachment, then the killing of animals is prohibited. prohibited. So the Kazi is actually agreeing with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in an indirect way. Pavitri Marga Govada Karita Virihoi Shastra Agyana Bhada Kaile Nahi Papa Bhaya. On the path of material activities, there is regulation for killing cows. If such killing is done under the guidance of scripture, there is no sin. So here, on the path of material activities, hmm. So, the Shastra, the word Shastra is derived from the word Datu, or verbal root Shash. Shash Datu pertains to control or ruling. A government's ruling through force or weapons is called Shastra. So there's Shastra and Shastra. So don't get those two mixed up. Shastra and Shastra, you can see the words here are different. Thus, when there is a ruling, either by weapons or injunction, the Shastatu is the basic principle. Between Shastra, ruling through weapons, and Shastra, I mean Shastra, ruling through weapons, and Shastra, ruling through the injunctions of the scriptures, the better is Shastra. Our Vedic scriptures are not ordinary law books of human common sense. They are the statements of factually liberated persons unaffected by the imperfectness of the senses. Shastra must be correct always, not sometimes correct and not sometimes incorrect. In the Vedic scripture, the cow is described as a mother. Therefore, she is the mother for all time. It is not as some rascals say that in the Vedic age, she was a mother, but she is not in this age. If Shastra is an authority, the cow is mother always. She is a mother in the Vedic age and she is a mother in this age also. If one acts according to the injunctions of Shastra, he is freed from the reactions of sinful activities. For example, propensity, now this is, a, you have to understand there are propensities, propensities is an important word for eating flesh Drinking wine and enjoying sex are all natural for the conditioned soul. The path of such enjoyment is called pravritri mark. The Shastras say, pravritri esa bhuta nam riditas tu maha phala. One should not be carried away by the propensities of defective condition in life. One should be guided by the principles of the Shastras. A child's propensity is to play all day long. But in the injunctions of the Shastras, that the parents should take care of the and educate him. The Shastras are there just to guide the activities of human society. But, but because people do not refer to the instructions of Shastras, which are free from defects and imperfections, they are therefore misguided by so-called educated teachers and leaders who are full of the deficiencies of conditioned life. So it says that, you know, if a person has a little bit of intelligence, they can take something and twist it and turn it and make it into something different. So on the basis of scripture, sometimes we see people justify uh, 
cow, cow killing, intoxication, illicit sexual activity, all these things are, are given justification by unscrupulous persons who, who are motivated by material propensities. But we understand that Shastra is given by the great souls and therefore one should follow Shastra and not the whims of the ruling authorities. The Shastra is the rule. Okay. So, um, we'll stop here and see if there's any discussion. We have about 15 minutes for discussion. Pranams, Maharaj. Sorry, Mataji. No, no, Mataji, please go ahead, Mataji. Pranams Maharaj, my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri Prabhupada, all glories to you. So, um, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the um, talk today, Maharaj. Um, you mentioned about this um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how he was um, always questioned or, uh, during his journey and he I remembered um, the uh, Mayavadi Sanyasi, who was trying to reason about why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was into the Sankirtan movement and not the study of the Vedanta Sutra. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so my question is, Maharaj, that what is the difference between Sutra and Shastra? Or is it one and the same? No, Shastra is the complete, complete explanation on, on philosophical and spiritual principles, both in application and theory. Sutras are just small little quips of knowledge. They are more like um, axioms, or what's another word? Uh, sayings. A sutra is like, I'll give you an example of what a sutra is. A sutra is um, um, let's see. Truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. That's a sutra. Truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. So in that, it's packed up. There's a lot of meaning in those few words. So a sutra takes a principle and packs it up into a short phrase. Mm -hmm. Shastra is scripture because of shastatu. And it comes from the principle of rule. People must be ruled either by Shastra or Shastra, Shastra or Shastra. Shastra means, one is Shastra means weapons, when a society rules by weapons, or by Shastra, by religious principles. So a, a real human society is ruled by Shastra, which are the volumes of information given by the Supreme Lord through his representatives, the spiritual teachers, who disseminate that knowledge to this to society. So you see the difference between a sutra and shastra. It's, it's a big difference. So, so the sutra is not for us. It's more for sannyasis or elevated um, no, anyone can take advantage of a sutra. A sutra is just a statement, that's all. Like it says, Vedanta Sutra. So the Vedanta Sutra, sutra means codes, basically. So the Vedanta was given in sutra form. 
and it's more of codes and then people could not understand it. So you had to unpack it. So that's what Vyasadeva did and he turned, he unpacked it the Vedanta Sutras into the, the Brahma Sutras and from the Brahma Sutras he expanded it into Srimad Bhagavatam. So you can take one simple statement that is true and you can write a book about it. So sutras are just, it's not that they're limited to a particular class of people, they're for everyone. But generally, unless one has the spiritual acumen, ability, it's hard for uh, common people, ordinary people, to penetrate the meaning of sutras. So therefore, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought about the Sankirtan movement, just um, chanting the glories of the Holy Name. Full stop. Right, which is the essence of the Vedas. Yeah, all the Vedas end with this, with this conclusion. To glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead through chanting his, his holy names in association with others is the principle for, of the supreme form of worship in this age. Oh. And you'll find that if you study the Bhagavatam, you'll come to the conclusion of Bhagavatam, which is given at the end of Bhagavatam, the last verse in Bhagavatam, sums up the whole meaning of Bhagavatam. Although Bhagavatam contains a variety of subject matters, still there is an essence. So if you go to the last verse, you'll find that's the essence of the Bhagavatam's message, which is 12th canto, 13th chapter, verse number 23. So that sums up Bhagavatam. Aruna, you can, Arud, who is it? Aruda? Vrinda, uh, who is it? Vrinda, 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 okay, Vrinda. Yes, can you put up, can you put up that verse? Uh, Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, 12th canto. It's the very last verse in the entire Bhagavatam. Okay. So you, you'll find that, as Srila Prabhupada sp speaks over and over again, that each of the verses of the Bhagavatam contains unlimited meanings. But how many, can, how many people can understand that? And we have the example of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, who spoke on the first verse of Bhagavatam, Janmagya Syatataha, Itara Sas, Charetus, that first verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati spoke on that verse for three months every day, two hours a day for three months, but not covering the same points over and over again. So the Bhagavatam is in. It needs to be unpacked. That's why if you, if Prabhupada didn't give us the purports, we wouldn't be able to understand the Bhagavatam. Uh, Maharaj, uh, which is the exact verse or is there? Yeah, 12, 13, 23. Nama Sankirtana Yasya Sarva Papa Panasanam Pranama Dukkha Samanas Tanamami Harim Param. Mm -hmm. Last verse. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Hari, the congregational chanting of whose holy names destroys all sinful reactions. 
and the offering of obeisances unto who relieves all material sufferings. Last verse in the Bhagavatam. The last verse glorifies the chanting of the holy name of Lord Hari Krishna. Destroys all sinful activities, relieves all material sufferings, So, Maharaj, is it right to understand then that um, the the holy name is our shelter? So we understand that that the power is in the holy name, and the shastra is our weapon um, in case we're preaching or it just solidifies our own bhakti. It, is that how we see this? Well, Shastra is a direction. Knowledge is a knowledge is compared to light, and light sheds direct sheds direction upon the path you are going upon. Material world is dark, and transcendental knowledge is that light that guides you through the darkness of the material world towards the unlimited light of transcendence, the spiritual world. So transcendental knowledge destroys ignorance and awakens bhakti. Mm. If you don't know why you're chanting or what is the benefit of chanting or how to chant, most of us wouldn't chant. Somebody says to you, chant Hare Krishna, you might say, well, why? And then you, then you give them the knowledge. It's that simple. The, the Vedas explain the process, and the Vedas explain how to execute the process, and the Vedas explain the purpose of the process. What is the process? How to do it? And what's the benefit? That's the knowledge you need. If you're sitting in your kitchen and you want to cook something, you have to know, you have to have the ingredients. You have to have the material to cook with, pots, pans, ladles, spoons, stove, environment. And then you have to have you know, the knowledge of how to cook. And what, what, what you're interested in is the results, the food. But without that knowledge, you won't get the results or you get the wrong results. So the, the Shastras is, is that knowledge that gives us the results of love of God. Clear? Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Simple. Yeah. So if you if you hear from the great shows, they 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 break everything down into two. Chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and read and study Bhagavatam daily. If you do these two things, everything else will automatically follow. Mm -hmm. That means you'll know how to worship the deities, you'll know how to associate with devotees, you'll know how to behave in, in various atmospheres, you'll know everything if you read Bhagavatam and you chant Hare Krishna. Everything, those two are enough to give you everything you need. But you have to work at it. It's not something you just do one day and expect that everything is done. 
No, it's a process. Okay, so we're at the two o'clock mark and uh, one o'clock mark for you and two o'clock for me. Um, I have to depart as Sunday. I always have to end right on the hour because I always have a appointment at this time. So thank you very much. I hope you're finding this pastime interesting. It's also very relevant to today's crisis in the world. The remedy is Harinam Sankirtan. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Runda, for your wonderful service. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for uh, enlightening us on this Chaitanya Charitamrita verses. There is so much to learn from this. Many points I got to. Thank you so much, Maharaj. All glory. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you. Thank you, dear devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. If you would like to